your number one news team covering the North. The Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. Welcome back. A young Bahamian putting pen to paper and releasing a book that has been described as a thought-provoking. The book highlights the need for love despite cultural and lifestyle differences in an effort to promote unity, understanding, and trust for a better Christian nation. He says his first book, The God of Many Faces, was inspired by human interaction with God. But as he traveled around the world, he realized that there were many who were not Christians and who do not believe in God. Yet, he is compelling his readers to love all and not just a selected few. I feel that, you know, um, a lot of us Christians, we get into this bad habit of judging people who don't necessarily subscribe or who don't live in a lifestyle or, or in a way that is conducive to self-belief. Angelo Mottamor says Christians should never forget that the greatest commandment is love and love should not be conditional. We have to sit and really evaluate what is going on. Why is it that churches around the world are not so full? Is it the condemnation? Even when I went on a very dark path, it was in church that brought me to that understanding. It was just love, love by atheists, love by Muslims. But I've come to realize that Jehovah is real, and this is what I put in my book. He says the book outlines why Christians should love regardless of race or cultural differences. And there is a particular chapter in this book where I discuss that we are in a general court of law. Leave the judge to do what he is there to do. The book, he says, also admonishes those of the Christian faith on the importance of bringing even the sinners back into the fold. The Lord himself had to come to me in my darkness because, oh, I was, you know, like a lot of people, they call me a backslider. And I'm still a work in progress. So if I'm still a work in progress, I'm sure a lot of people are. And we need to get into that form of Christianity where we show love. And so far, the book that can be considered thought-provoking is already receiving brief reviews. It was a particular restaurant, not restaurant, a convenience store that I would go to. And she told me, Angelo, you shook the core of my faith and made me really repent of my judgmental ways. The book is serious. If you wish to purchase The God of Many Faces, you can contact Angela Watermore at 646-5130 or purchase it on Amazon in Kindle form. And now it's time for a check on sports. Good evening, I'm Jay Philippe and welcome to Sports, two of our brightest stars excelling on the international scene. It is certainly a proud time to be a Bahamian. DeAndre Ayton and the Phoenix Suns are headed to the NBA Finals for the first time since 1993 after dominating the LA Clippers 130-103 on Wednesday night. With both teams chasing their first ever championship, the Suns prevailed in six games. Ayton was pivotal in the series clinching win, registering yet another double-double with 16 points on 8 of 10 shooting from the field while also grabbing a game-high 17 rebounds in 40 minutes of action. The 7'1 center will be the first Bahamian-born player to advance to the NBA Finals since Michael Thompson. The Suns will face either the Atlanta Hawks or Milwaukee Bucks in the finals who are tied at two games apiece in the East Finals. From the men's side to women's hoops, John Quell Jones was named to yet another WNBA All-Star team. Jones will be making a third All-Star appearance this summer. Jones has been among the league's most dominant players this season, averaging 21.7 points per game and 10.9 rebounds per game. She currently also leads the WNBA in win shares per 40 minutes. Now on a sad note, the sporting and Junkin community is mourning the passing of legendary coach Terry Wild Goose. Goose was a pillar in the Grand Bahama community. Goose was a pillar in the Grand Bahama community as a national team basketball coach. He was also accorded the honor of winning Grand Bahama's first national basketball championship in the late 1980s. You're talking about a great guy, you know, a great coach, a great person. 
Uh, and it's sad to see him, you know, leaving us this soon. Mr. Wagos played a very, very important part in the community when it came to sports. And I think the sporting community right now all are mourning because Mr. Wagos was more than just an average coach. Coach, He was the coach. It's hard to put in words how much we're going to miss what I call a Terry Wild Goose. Uh, he loved the sport. He gave his life to, 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 to young men. Uh, he always bragged that, uh, that the leaders he has are pastors. The Orrin Mark Fee, the Dental and McGuire Swain. He considered me also uh, Tony Bird. A lot of those young men uh, came from Terry Wild Goose. And that's all I have for you in sports. Rest in peace, Terry Wild Goose.